What is ocular immune privilege? It's the attempt that our eye makes to limit local immune and inflammatory responses in order to preserve our vision. So it's a homeostatic mechanism that preserves the normal function of our eyes since they have such highly specialized tissue and a limited capacity for renewal in case of injury. So why is it necessary? Well, it protects our eyes from the negative effects of the inflammatory response. Think of it this way. If a pathogen were to enter our eye and this caused some sort of major inflammatory response, we could momentarily lose our vision. So ocular immune privilege is an evolutionary adaptive mechanism that over time the body has devised to maintain our vision so that we can interpret our surroundings and sense any danger around us, thus ensuring our survival. So what advantages does ocular immune privilege give us? Well, one of the advantages it gives us is the lack of an immune response to the introduction of an allograft, which is tissue taken from one person in order for it to be transplanted on a different person. And this is especially useful when we consider tissue transplantation. Now, let's take a look at some of the diseases that can affect the eye. So, uveitis refers to a group of inflammatory diseases in the eye linked to swelling and destruction of eye tissues. The question then is, if we have such a complex protection mechanism as the ocular immune privilege, then why are we still susceptible to uveitis, which is an inflammation, of the uvea? So in order to understand this question and be able to answer it, we need to also understand how ocular immune privilege works. It involves a mechanism that, one, suppresses inflammation, and two, promotes immune tolerance. Now, one of the misconceptions that we had in the past is that before we used to believe that antigens in immune privilege sites were concealed from the immune system by physical barriers and subsequently ignored. But through science, we now know that antigens do leave immune privilege sites and that these same antigens can induce an immune response. We know that immune effector cells can have access to immune privilege sites. Therefore, we've come to know that immune privilege, ocular immune privilege, is an active rather than passive process. Ocular immune privilege is also not absolute. So, if it isn't absolute, then when is the mechanism working? So, there are two mechanisms within our eyes that are necessary to maintain ocular immune privilege. The first one being the blood ocular barrier, and the second one being the mechanisms which make up the DIE, which stands for Down Regulatory Immune Environment. Under certain conditions, when there's a malfunction in either one of these two mechanisms, then ocular immune privilege can be lost. So, uh, for example, a dysfunction or breakdown of the blood retinal barrier leads to diabetic retinopathy or cystoid macular edema. A loss of the DIE, or the down regulatory immune environment, can lead to many forms of uveitis or can even cause age-related macular degeneration. So, what then makes it possible for our eyes to have ocular immune privilege? So, our eyes have many features that contribute to it being an immune privilege site. These include a combination of local and systematic mechanisms, such as the lack of lymphatic draining and low expression of the MHC, or the major histocompatibility complex molecules, um, there's also the rich presence of immunosuppressive molecules, so there's an increased expression of surface molecules that inhibit complement activation. Um, there's also the anatomical features of a blood barrier. Um, there's the anterior chamber associated immune deviation, which can be shortened as ACAID. Um, which is pretty much an immune response to antigens injected to the anterior chamber. And of course, there's natural killer T cells that can also play a role in the regulation of immune responses and are necessary for the development or of the ACAID, which was previously mentioned. So, even though ocular immune privilege does sound fantastic, it does have some cons. For one, ocular immune privilege and 
other tumor-related uh, immune privilege can combine to permit extensive tumor growth and can increase the risk of metastasis, which threatens the survival of the individual or host. And second, ocular immune privilege is a volatile characteristic of the eye. It can protect the eye under necessary conditions, but it can also cause irreparable damage of eye tissue in its absence. So why is ocular immune privilege so important? So this mechanism has many implications. One of the main risks faced in transplantation is the risk of tissue getting rejected by the immune system. Because of ocular immune privilege, allografts are protected against the body's rejection of transplantation tissue. This means that if we're able to understand more about the molecules and mechanisms of the molecules involved in ocular immune privilege, then these molecules could later be applied to different areas of the body. They can extend the survival of all allografts universally, and they could even suppress autoimmune disease. This would in turn result in less need for tissue typing, less need for existing anti-rejection drugs, an increased pool of potential allogenic donors, and a reduction in the amount of time needed for the transplantation process, which includes pre-screening for acceptance and compatibility, which could also save lives. And there are so many other questions that are still left to be answered about ocular immune privilege that are currently being investigated. Among them are how exactly can we use the mechanism of ocular immune privilege to promote allograft survival, and what are further processes within the immune response that we could look into in order to understand the molecular building blocks of ocular immune privilege. Any ideas?